Hi Chris, this is chapter 22, Operation Fruit Burst. Luckily for us, dragon fruit grew surprisingly quickly and by the start of the following week, the fruits had reached the size of mangoes and they'd started to turn red. The plan was this. We would ask my granddad if we could camp in his garden overnight. Then it would be simple enough to sneak down to the vegetable patch and look for the hatching dragons. My grandparents wouldn't even know we weren't fast asleep and surely there'd be no chance of running into Grimm in the dead of the night. Even luckier, there was a teacher training day at school on Friday, so we could camp on Thursday night, catch the dragons, and then have an extra long weekend to play with them. You really have to admire our optimism. So with Kat and Kai as our team organisers, Operation Fruit Burst got into full swing. Planning is what the twins do best. And by Wednesday morning, we had provisions, plans, equipment lists, and an hour by hour timetable of the whole event. It wasn't the worst plan ever. It might even have worked. In the afternoon, as Flicker settled down in the toy box, scratching my latest comic into comfortable sized pieces for his bed, I looked at the list supplied by Captain's Cat and Kai. I scanned to see what I was expected to bring. It seemed pretty thorough, you know, for just the one night. Provision and equipment list. Sandwiches. Marmite and peanut, butter and honey, and chocolate spread, golden syrups with hundreds and thousands. Cake. Ice buns, currant buns, jam donuts, custard donuts, gingerbread, treacle tarts, lemon sprinkles, fairy cakes, chocolate muffins, chocolate chip cookies, chocolate cupcakes, and chocolate brownies. Chocolate. Cat and Kai's birthday leftovers. Emergency chocolate in case we get hypothermia. Extra emergency chocolate for when Ted eats the emergency chocolate. S tent, sleeping bags, sleeping mat, torches, night vision goggles, walkie talkies, compass, water bottles, already filled, mallet, bandages, smelly stuff for repelling the bugs, string, woolly hats, nets, and face paint. Useful books to take with us. Camping in the wild outdoors the ultimate survival handbook, how to survive a bear attack, and 101 deadly plants. I wasn't 100% sure I was going to get half of this stuff. The only walkie-talkies I could find were Lolly's Dora the Explorer ones, and I wasn't going to be taking those. As it turned out, the main thing we needed was the tent, and I bet you can forget, you can guess what we forgot. So there we were on Thursday, finally ready to put the plan into action, and yep, no tent. Luckily, Grandad had one kicking about in the garage, along with various bits of dodgy camping kit, including some rusty saucepans, and none of us fancied touching them, let alone eating from them. We've had a fair few adventures with this lot, me and your nan, Grandad chuckled. Stick it in the front garden, Nana said, and then added, that way, you're nice and close for anyone needing to pop in to use, you know, the facilities which is her polite way of saying the downstairs toilet, which is just inside the front door. So under Grandad's instruction, and in between his stories of camping in the wilderness, we put it up. Oh, it smells like feet, whispered Kat, screwing up her nose. It looks a little bit small, muttered Kai. And a little bit droopy, mouthed Ted. It's a good sturdy tent, that, said Grandad, resting his hand on one of the tent poles, and then quickly taking it away again, as the whole thing begin to, began to sag. Good job we aren't planning on sleeping much, murmured Ted. By the time Grandad had left us to go inside, we had got pretty well organised. There wasn't much room, but we figured being that close together would probably help prevent the whole hypothermia thing, which Kai insisted on reading to us about, from horrendous hazards and how to avoid them, a guide to camping safely. I'm not sure we needed to hear in such detail about the stages of frostbite or to see all those pictures of fingerless hands. But as camp doctor, he was taking no chances. Right, said Cat, as we huddled around the flickering lantern. It's time to get camouflaged. Operation Fruit Burst is go. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow.